Well, welcome everyone to another edition of the Mountaintop Comic Review. I'm Charlie. And I'm Richard. And I'm Sawyer. And we're going to be coming to you today giving you the best, the ins, the outs, the ups, the down of the comic book scene and the comic book culture. So let's get this show on the road. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our reviews of the week. Comics that we absolutely loved this week, and I'll be honest, I did a lot of reading over the week, and I found some stuff, too many things to go on the show, so I've got some honorable mentions, i got some stuff I want to uh, focus on. Number one for me is Justice League Odyssey number seven. Now, when this series started, wasn't into it at all. There was just something about the team, you've got... Uh, Starfire, you've got Azrael, uh, Cyborg, and Jessica Cruz, the Green Lantern, uh, female Green Lantern. She had her own series with another Green Lantern. Simon Baz. Yes, not long ago. And this series started off really slow for me. But now it's hit its full stride, and I absolutely love it. Nice. Like, fantastic book right now. Justice League Odyssey number seven from DC Comics. Go and check it out. All right, uh, my first pick for the week. It's a, it's a, it's starting out. Um, Dial H for Hero. I was talking about it last week. I was yep. super pumped for it, and I'm glad I was pumped for it because my feelings and my um, excitement has not been let down, Charlie. It's super cool. The art's great. Uh, the writer Sam Humphreys was awesome on it. Um, very well done, and it's a great jumping on point. Uh, like I said, this book is just well done in the fact that it's a starting point, and it's a boy who gets a phone, and then he has to dial a number, and he becomes a hero. And the art changes with the with the hero he chooses, mm -hmm. but right now all we know is one hero he can transform into, and we don't know anything about the phone. So if you're wanting to get into somebody new, learn something new, um, this is a perfect um, perfect issue. It's part of the Wonder Comics line um, when Bendis took over DC, not totally took over. Um, this is one of the new jumping on points. So Dial H for Hero, issue one. Um, it's out, and you guys should definitely dial it up and check it out. Sawyer, what do you got? My first review is Hulk Vereen's number two. This book is great. It's the Hulk, Wolverine, and Weapon H duking it out. Now, Weapon H is a Hulk and Wolverine combined. He is so powerful. I love Weapon H. He's I love him too. He's so cool and um, best know. of both worlds, right? Yeah, Sorry. Just, it's so great. And then they're all duking it out, and it's just three characters you don't normally see fight. And then there's one of them there. That's both of the characters. Yeah, it's crazy. And in the end, there's a big, big thing that happens, and I want to see what happens next. This is Hulk Vereen's number two of a three-part series by Marvel Comics. Awesome. Uh, my second. Pick of the week comes from also comes from DC Comics. It's the Terrifics number fourteen. Now the the Terrifics, Terrifics. Learn how to talk, stupid. The Terrifics is, I would say, DC's version of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. You've got uh, Plastic Man, Phantom Girl, uh, Mister Terrific, and. Uh, who am I forgetting? The Metamorpho. 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 Say, the Changing yeah. Man, yes. But this series has been the little engine that could. When they had the new Age of Heroes, DC launched maybe about a year ago. They've slowly dropped like flies. All they of started them. off with yeah. like 10 titles, mm -hmm. and all of them just boom, boom, boom. And it came down to the final two titles, The Silencer, which is a fantastic book, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's a little sniping angle. It's more than just, it's more than what you think. Yeah. It makes me so sad. They just announced that uh, Silencer will be ending with issue number 18. Oh, no. it's such a bummer. Oh. But the Terrifics have survived, and they're going to be continuing on. Sweet. Now, Jeff Lemire, he's been the writer. Yes, But he will favorites. be leaving the writing chair. Somebody's going to be taking okay, over. Okay. But all I care is that it's going to be continuing on. Yeah. I love this team. I love this book. This is everything that the Fantastic Four is not, in my opinion, wow, wow, right wow, now. Wow. Because to me, and this is just me talking, the new Fantastic Four series has been a little bit underwhelming. I don't know if you're picking it up or if you're I, picking yeah, it I'm up. I'm with you, Charlie. I haven't been super excited about it, but the Terrifics, I'm excited about it. Every single month, I 
love this series. I love those characters, and I love that team. Wow. It's the Terrifics, number 14 from DC Comics. Please check this one out so it survives. It doesn't reach the cutting block. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> All right, I've got another number one, guys. Um, it's from Archie Comics this time. It's my first time reviewing Archie. And I Charlie and I shared a story very close to Charlie's Heart, the Archie series. Love Archie Comics. This is Sabrina the Teenage Witch, issue one, by Kelly Thompson, a Marvel writer, and Veronica Fish and Andy Fish. But a little duo who do the art for Sabrina. Now, it's not the chilling adventures, guys. Right, it's right. It's nothing to get freaked out and, you know, nothing too horror-esque, you know. But right. if you're ready and you're super psyched for the Netflix run of the new up-and-coming yes. season two of Chilling Adventures Sabrina, this is a good light to fill the void. Mm -hmm. And right now, guys, this is just a five-issue thing. Mm -hmm. So, but if everything turns out all right, they're going to continue it on. So, kind of like the Terrifics, this is a trial. But Terrifics is more of ongoing. This is more of a mini right now. Mm -hmm. But right um, currently, you've got just Sabrina, her two aunts, Hilda and Zelda, and you know they live in a house, and it's a coming of age story, and the tone's totally different from the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Um, and more lighthearted. It's stuff. definitely lighthearted. Oh, yeah. And we were talking earlier about the Archie series; it's more down to earth stuff. Yes. And this has dropped the whole um, the new Riverdale Chilling Adventures. It's kind of come back to its roots, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's just lighter. And the problem she's dealing with could be anything from high school drama including bullying, issues like that. And she's using her powers here and there to navigate her way through this adolescent life. It's a great story. The art, superb, and the story writing is amazing. Um, Kelly Thompson did a little bit of the um, Captain Marvel. Right. So she helped bring Captain Marvel out there with her writing. And mm -hmm. I think you guys should give it a try. It's only issue one. And the more people we have going out there getting it, the longer this series can go. And I'm hooked. So this is something I was not picking up. But now I'm like, you know what? I think I'm back into my Archie world now. I'm going to start with Sabrina and see what else it has to offer. And if we got any kids that are watching the podcast, watching the video series, go out and get some of the Archie Digest. They're full of fun stories, full of... Those characters are absolutely amazing. It's perfect for kids. Archie Comics, I'm behind it 100%. Sawyer, what is your second? My second book is Amazing Spider-Man number 18 which is the second part of a new story arc that's just been wonderful. The Hunted Part 2. They've got a bunch of heroes in one place and, and villains, and you're just gonna, you're trying to see what happened. Every turn, there's a new surprise, something else happening, a new person coming up. There's a betrayal in this book. No. There's, there's a surprise ending, and there's just, everywhere you look, something is happening. There's, there's actually multiple betrayals, come to think of it. It's just... Everybody, it's every man for themselves, whether you like it or not. It's all about survival or money. It's a and version of the most dangerous game. I was going to say, the human is being hunted, you know, like the most dangerous game. Yeah, I like it's that. It's focused on Craven the Hunter, correct? Yes. yes, Craven the Hunter. Awesome. This is Amazing Spider-Man number eight, 18, The Hunted Part 2. Wonderful story. Nice. All right, Richard, what is your third? Number three for me would be Shazam issue four. And I know the movie's coming out, what, next week now, guys? And mm -hmm. some of us saw it a little early. And if you, you saw it a little early, this is a, this is a good, um, it's, it ties into the movie in a way, guys. So it's a, it's a mini right now. It's on issue four. And what they're really just going into are these seven different mystical realms. So kind of like Thor has his different realms. Right. Um, Shazam has it as well. And they're all trapped in different lands. Could be the fun lands, um, could be any the game lands. And what's really cool is you're learning. And um, I'm a new up-and-coming reader with Shazam, so this for me is a great jumping on point. Now, does it focus on just Shazam or does it focus on the whole Marvel family? That's a good question. It focuses on the whole family. Because so you're Mary Marvel. Mary Marvel, Eugene, they're all split awesome. in the different and this issue, Charlie. Um, I'm, I'm really wanting to get to know this character, Tawny the Tiger. Uh, talking Tawny. Never, never heard a, of that one. <laughs> yeah, okay, so he was a write-in name that mm -hmm. came up with him, but he is in it, and you get to see the Wildlands, where, where he's from. So you're learning, and if you you really like the movie, if you saw it, and if you didn't see it, this is a great, great place to be right now for Shazam. So issue four, it's a mini, and at the very end, whew, there's a jaw dropper, and I love my jaw droppers. Yep. So right here, pick it up, Shazam number four, and you know, fill the void. Or if you're done and you're wanting more Shazam, pick it up. All right, and don't forget, great. Shazam hitting theaters on April the 5th. My third and final book is Detective Comics number 1000. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, uh -oh. wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? 
I said I was going to do Detective Comics 1000. Batman is my favorite superhero. Listen, Junior, I picked what that one first. Well, listen up. How's this? I'll arm wrestle you for it. It seems fair, Charlie. I mean, that's the only logical, you know, um, thing to do when an arm argument happens. Arm wrestle? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. All I'll right. arm wrestle you. Okay. All right, let's go, guys. Give me All right, a break. let's clear the table Are here. Are you kidding me? Hey, here we go. Boy, All right, guys. You just ask for it. This is where you go down. Keep it clean, gentlemen. Both elbows on the table. Roll those sleeves up. Charlie's ready. Sawyer's ready. Is anybody's game? Detective Comics 1000. Let's go. We'll see about that. All right. All right, guys. On your mark. Get set. Arm wrestle. Get. 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 Oh, was that Sawyer? Sawyer's the winner. Give a round of applause. Sawyer, cheated! What a baby. Oh, well, I mean, it was for a thousand, so Sawyer, I guess you won, man. I guess that, that means you got it. All right. Well, Batman number 1000. This has multiple stories of Batman in it. My favorite being manufacture for use and Batman's design. He's still whining about losing. I can't believe him. What a baby. And so... It also had a lot of wonderful variant covers, mine being the 1940s variant cover with Bruce Timm doing the art and all the stories. And at the end, there's a big surprise new appear first appearance in the main universe and crazy. Yes. You're Bruce Timm right here, right? That, Animated that's my series cover. Batman. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'll put that out there too. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, the stories in this book are crazy. And like I said, new surprise character at the end, a bit of a jaw dropper leading into the coming issues after 1000. It's just, I love this book because it had some of my favorite past detective writers. And they all wrote their own stories coming up. And it was just a great book. Speaking of stories, Charlie. Oh, I can talk What's now? Up I mean... <laughs> I guess we should let him go, right, Sawyer? I guess. I did beat you. Ooh, whatever. Anyway, Detective Comics 1000 is absolutely fantastic. What It was started in, what, 1942? Yeah, yeah. 1,000 issues of The Dark Knight, the world's greatest detective. This is a an end, but also the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been hinting around to the Arkham Knight, which yes. is going to start in issue 1001. So, let me tell you, this is a milestone. You need to pick it up. Detective Comics 1000, and you cheated. Oh. <clears throat> so, for my final book, my third book here, you could just take that. Thank you. It would be Avengers No Road Home number seven. I was absolutely blown away by this. This is a fantastic, I would really like to see this Avengers lineup. Oh, yeah. You've got Conan mm -hmm. as a member of the Avengers. His chemistry with the Scarlet Witch. It's interesting. It, this is great. I actually got to sit down and I read the first seven issues of Avengers No Road Home all in one sitting, Whoa. and it is fantastic. Now, I know it's seven issues in, so you'd have to go back and buy those first seven issues to get this full story, but it is worth it. It is very good. Avengers No Road Home, number seven from Marvel Comics. I just want to say I'm excited for the next issue where you could see on the cover, Nyx was bearing down on Hulk, Nyx the main villain in that book. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. If those two teams are going to go at it, I, it's going to be a big fight if oh. they do. Oh, yeah. And it, it's it's building up more and more and more. Like I said, I would love to see this group that's in this book as the main Avengers team. But and we'll see what yeah, happens. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see, Charlie. Like, we will see Conan, though. They've teased it in a new Avengers team coming out later this, uh, this, this year. So we'll at least get to see Conan on a team. But, man, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Super good. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, our reviews for this week. We've got more of Mountaintop Comics Review coming right up. We are celebrating the release of Detective Comics 1000. Of course, it's been around for a very, very long time. Started in 1939. Actually, 
Batman's first appearance was Detective Comics number 27, created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. And today, in uh, tribute, I guess you would say, we're going to talk about our favorite Batman stories of all time. And I guess I'll go ahead and kick us off. For Charlie. For me, it involves one of my favorite characters ever. He is now known as the Red Hood, and I'm talking about Jason Todd. Well, at one time, Jason Todd wasn't very popular among the fans out there, and there was actually a call-in vote. You could call in to DC Comics and decide Robin's fate. Now, of course, Jason Todd was the second Robin. He came after Dick Grayson decided to grow up and move on. And uh, the fans weren't really fond of Jason Todd. I really don't understand that. I, I love the character, always have. Well, the vote came in, and it was chosen to kill him off. So with that, they created my favorite Batman story. It's called A Death in the Family, The Death of Jason Todd. Like all comic book heroes and villains, no one ever stays dead. <laughs> Jason Todd makes a return later on and becomes the Red Hood. But I've got to say, this story is classic 80s Batman involving one of my favorite characters, Jason Todd, now known as the Red Hood. It's a death in the family from DC Comics. That is my favorite Batman story of all time. Nice. Richard. My favorite, um, it's kind of recent, it's the uh, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, um, when DC first did the relaunch of their uh, New 52, mm -hmm. they had a storyline called the Court of Owls. Mm -hmm. So right here I'm holding a mask of one of the um, Court of Owl members, and basically it was a secret society, guys, mm -hmm. and they've been around for like all of time, um, Western 1600s was some of the earlier um, uh, recordings of them, and and basically, they manipulated and had control in every little thing and every event that happened in Gotham. Mm -hmm. And what's really neat is they've been around and, and they've, they've had their hand in everything. Mm -hmm. And we've not known about them. And they have these people called the Talons. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're these, these, these people who can pretty much regenerate over and over again. And Batman has to somehow find out how to defeat something that's been around longer than he has. And he's not even known about it. And that's for me, was really cool. I, I was looking for a place to go. I've been, I was reading Batman at the time. And I thought, okay, where's a good place to jump in? This was it. And they have a nice, nice, lovely, lovely collection here at Mountaintop with the mask. And it's one of the first Batman stories from the relaunch when, uh, when DC did their story. So I really like it. It has a nice little poem here. It says, Beware the Court of Owls that watches all the time. Ruling Gotham from a shadowed perch behind granite and lime. They watch you at your hearth and they watch you in your bed. Speak not a whisper word of them or they'll send the talons for your head. And that right there, guys, is just a little tease. Awesome, Court of Owls, pick it up. It's the first volume of the um, the new 52, so I, I love it, it's great. John, what you got for us, man? Well, I don't necessarily have a favorite series or story arc. What I found recently, I'm a, I'm a fan of Neil Adams. Oh yeah, yeah. So Neil, Neil Adams, Adams did, yes. as people would know, several pieces for Batman. Oh yeah. But, but in, the, in his book, Batman Illustrated, by Neil Adams in the Ford. He has a piece here that I thought I would share uh, briefly that kind of gives you insight into how he as an artist got his first chance to draw Batman and be involved and in how he took on that project. So if you'll bear with me. Go for it. Neil Adams, in my mind I needed to know Bruce Wayne, the Batman. Who was he? Well, first he is a six foot two or three inch man who handles his body though big like a 5'9 Bruce Lee or a gymnast. Mm. This is his gift from God along with a potentially brilliant mind. As a child, a bright, aware child, his parents are gunned down before his eyes. His responses are normal, horror, terror, sadness, loneliness, heart-wrenching confusion, but settling over this is a terrible resolve, a steely, long-lived, and pure burning fire of resolve to battle against the forces of evil and halt these kinds of injustices. Too naive and simplistic? You might think so, and you could be right, but the heroes of our history and our world are molded from this same stuff, 
and truly do not hear the voices of cynics, naysayers, or those that are above such thinking. Bruce, at an early age, put his resolve into action. He trained himself relentlessly in mind and body. He became an impossible thing. He became the equal of Sherlock Holmes in deductive and detective abilities. He drove his mental faculties and sensitivities to their outermost edge. At the same time, he trained his body to a perfection reached by a few. He became such a physical specimen as would make a Spartan wonder, and if he entered the Olympics, he would win, place, or show in every event. Then he did this weapon against crime beneath the disguise of a rich, flamboyant, yet caring playboy and philanthropist. Yes. Hey, I messed up it. <laughs> philanthropist. There you go. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, like a partner, he stalks the darkness, weeding out crime in silence and relentlessly. Nor does he question the rightness of justice of what he does. That question has, was settled when he was a child. You must remember, Batman is the only superhero who is not a superhero. He has no powers, no spider bites, no mutant or accidental radiation or chemical gift. He's not a visitor from another planet. He's a human being bent on a mission. That's perfect. Wow. That yeah. sums just, it up right there. I, I love the reading of that, was, John. That was, that I, was wow. I just thought that was an amazing take as how he approached Batman, the character, right. before, before he started to draw this character. Yes. So. I don't even know how to follow that up. <laughs> <laughs> and show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, this here is the... Um, storybook they did for eight eight decades of detective comics it's got multiple detective comics single issues in it and a lot of first appearances it's really good but it's not my favorite story although it is quite good my favorite story is definitely batman the killing joke oh yeah by mm. alan moore and the art by brian bolin everything in this book is amazing oh, all yeah. of it it's Joker at the most insane you've ever seen him, mm -hmm. kinda. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, there's Batman at the end, there's a surprise, it's Joker's laughing, and then it stops. And you don't know what happened. And it's not technically in the Batman continuity, it's a standalone story, but it is one of the, if, well, my personal best Batman story ever. Ever. It's mm -hmm. it's amazing. I love the killing joke because it focuses on one of my favorite characters involved in the Bat universe, mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Gordon and yes. Batgirl or Barbara Gordon, uh -huh. and how the Joker affects her life and Commissioner Gordon's yep. life and Batman. It's it's a fantastic it's a story effect. as well. But it being outside that continuity. How many stories from that point forward? Yeah. How much material was has been referenced? Oh, absolutely! The impact. Absolutely, I think that that's how they framed the Joker was the the killing joke. That's how. Yeah. But back to what Charlie said, talking about uh, Commissioner and Barbara Gordon. Yeah, he uses he uses the people Batman know Batman knows and loves to manipulate him into into doing what Joker wants him to do. Yes. But in the end, Batman wins. But it, at the, this book leaves you wondering, did Batman really go to the point he said he never would? Right. And I really hope he didn't because I, that, I don't like that. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the Dark Knight has played a role in all of our lives. There's the, all these stories and many, many more. You can find trades galore on The Dark Knight. Batman, world's greatest detective right here at Mountaintop Comics. Well, last week was a huge week for comic book releases. There was all kinds of good stuff. Next week, same thing. All uh -huh. kinds of really good books coming out. G.I. Joe, Star Wars, Conan. But the three big titles that I'm super excited about this coming week. The Six Million Dollar Man. If you're a fan of the show from the 1970s, uh, Captain Steve Austin, half machine, half man. So good. From Dynamite Comics, it's Six Million Dollar Man number two coming out next week. Also, The Savage with a Sword, Red Sonya, number three. 
started off Marvel Comics in the 1970s. Now she has a home at Dynamite Comics. The new series is just underway. They're up to issue number three. I love Red Sonja. Great Sonya. jumping on point. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And you can get the first two issues really easy. Uh, and also, my third uh, title that I'm really looking forward to yeah. is Major X. Ooh. Rob Liefeld, who was really big in the 1990s, of course, he brought us X-Force, Young Blood, Supreme, and, of course, Deadpool, oh, yeah, the yeah. creator uh-huh. of Deadpool. Uh, he's got a brand new, he's come home to Marvel, and he's got a brand new series. It's a six-issue mini, but it's Major X. Hmm. And it starts next week. All right, nice, Richard, nice. what are you looking forward to? All right, Charlie. Well, there's a lot, but the major Marvel event, I think, War of Realms, it's, yep. I, I'm looking forward to that. Now, it's going to be the big main story Marvel's got going on. It's mm-hmm. all the realms, um, and they're all going to have a war, and it's going to be on Midgard here on Earth. Mm-hmm. So bunker down and get ready because there's a war coming, and Thor's in the middle of it. So I am pumped for that one, guys. That's my first pick. My second pick would be Young Justice number 4. And they're stuck on another world, and um, Amethyst world, a gym world, I believe. Oh, yeah. And they're coming together, and we're learning all about the new uh, heroes that formed the Young Justice team from a while back. They've come back together, so that's also going to be great. Art's great, story's great, double check there. And then the third one for me is a new one, Marvel Team Up, guys. So uh, Marvel Team Up won, and back then Marvel did some Team Up issues. Oh, yeah. This one is going to be with Spider-Man. And Spider-Man, I feel like, was one of those reoccurring people that was on the Team Up In the 1970s, they had two major Team Up books. They had Marvel Team Up, Mm -hmm. which was... Spider-Man and whoever. Yes. And then there was also Marvel 2 and 1, which was The Thing and whoever. And every once in a while, they would have two other different characters. But both of those series actually ran for over 100 issues. That's crazy that you mentioned that, Charlie, because we just had the kind of coming back of the Marvel 2-in-1. Oh, yeah. And now we have Marvel team-up. And I think the team-up this on this issue would be Camilla Khan as Miss Marvel and Spider-Man. So I'm looking forward to that one, issue one. Sawyer, what about you, man? What you what you My excited about? My top three that I'm excited for are Avengers No Road Home number eight. That oh, yeah. That just been wonderful. Yes, There's it like is. There's a huge fight going on mm-hmm. between Nyx, the goddess of the night, and the Avengers. Conan's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're in Conan's world, and mm-hmm. they're just they're all separated. But I think in this issue, there's going to be a huge battle between the Hulk and Nyx Ooh. and her children of the night. Yes. It's going to be huge. My next and second most favorite pick would be Die Number 5. This book, Die 1 through 4, has just been amazing. And I'm pretty sure Die Number 1 is going into, like, its fifth printing now. Wow. It's yes. crazy good. It's about three kids who get sucked into an RPG game that's Dungeon of Dra- Dungeons and Dragons-esque kind of thing, and they've got to save their friend and get out of the world, and right now this just there's a lot of monologuing. They're fighting with their inner demons right Ooh. now. They were, they're all grown up. In the beginning, they were kids, and it's just there's a lot of problems in the real world and this world that they have to deal with, and it's, it's really good. Sounds really interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, of course... <laughs> The book that I'm always coming back to, Justice League, number 21 this time. Great book. There's two Justice Leagues. They're they're in another dimension, and they're fighting the Legion of Doom. They were trying to mess everything up, and it's Mm. just... It's crazy. This book is so good, and I'm really excited for it. I actually... uh, I've got to admit, I've gotten behind on the Justice League, but... I'm going to take your word for it. I'm going to get caught up. I think I'm like six issues behind right now. It's not now. too bad, Charlie. But, but it's I, good, yeah. yeah. I'm uh, with you, Sawyer. It is It is some good, good stuff. Alternate okay. futures, so into it. But yes. Now, uh, we due to time constraints, we had some honorable mentions that we were going to mention earlier. They kind of got thrown to the wayside. Some books that we want you to check out that we didn't get to mention earlier. These are two books that I've got to, to plug right here. Freedom Fighters number four. Uh, that is fantastic. It is a team that they created in the late 60s. The leader of the team, the iconic Uncle Sam. He wants you. He wants right, you. He wants yes, you. Yes, that I Uncle love that. Sam. I love that. Yeah, the poster. They've classic. actually used that character as a hero. He has a team of fighters. They're fighting the Nazi in uh, real times today. 
It's basically a what if story. What if the Nazis won yes. World War II? So if you like, there's a game called Wolfenstein. Yes, yes. Where the same thing happens, but you're playing as a rebellion. Uh, not really a rebellion leader because you're just a person. Yes. And you're fighting the Nazis after they won World War Two. And from what I understand, I haven't read the book for, but from what I've heard you talk about, that that's the it's, same thing. It really is. It's basically the same thing. And it's uh, Adolf Hitler has passed on. His son has taken over. It's it's a great book. Freedom Fighters number four. The other one that I wanted to mention is Transformers number two. Optimus Prime, Megatron. Good, good stuff. It is a great jumping on point. Like I said, number two, this is a prequel to everything that's happened that's awesome. in Transformers so far. Richard, what are your honorable mentions right, well, this week? Well, I've got Riri Williams' Iron Hearts. So if you like Iron Man, which I always love Iron Man, he's my favorite hero, you'll love Riri Williams' Iron Heart. Great writing, down to earth, different, different, different kind of take on it. You know, yeah. this is a person who has constraints. Um, she's in college slash high school. She's skipping a couple grades because she's a genius, but she doesn't have the money like Tony does. And her parents are both dead too, and they were killed in a drive-by shooting. So similar tragedy, but not really, because right. Tony's parents were not dead. You know, they were there for him, but suit of armor, and she's kind of investigating something called the... Uh, the, it's a group 10 rings, so it kind of plays into the movies a little bit. We don't know if it's the Mandarin. Big questions, down-to-earth stories, and this is only on issue four, so Ironheart, pick it up, guys. One of my honorable mentions. Sawyer, what do you got going over there, man? I have two honorable mentions, the first one being Invaders number three. Yes. Now, the Invaders were a group of people who fought in World War II, and mm -hmm. this is coming back to them, but it's not focusing on them fighting. It's focusing on them coming back together and still being friends. Mm -hmm. Captain America, Namor, Bucky, uh, the Human Torch. The original android Jim Hammond Human oh, Torch. Oh, yes. jeez. Yep. Right. Next up. And that book's just been great, and they're trying to stop the Submariner, Namor, from starting a, a war between Atlantis and the surface world, as he's done like seven times. Yeah, I was going to say, that guy's been <laughs> mentally unstable yeah, when for he, a when very he gets long bored, time. That's what he does. Yeah. He starts war. I know. I'll do a war again. <laughs> for the 23rd, 24th time. Go ahead, sorry. But my second honorable mention is Marvel Comics Presents number three, it's three separate stories, mm. Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Captain America. You've got three amazing stories about three iconic characters. Yep. But some, some of the stories are playing into real-world problems, like Captain America's story is based in the 40s during cool. slavery, oh. and it focuses on racism. And I think that's really cool. It talks about how Captain America struggles with the problem that he can't fight that because it's not a fighting problem. Right, it's not a real, I mean, not a real thing, but not an actual physical thing that he can fight, right. And he just, it's its about that. And then it's just, all of them are great stories, but I wanted to point that one out because it just, it played into things that are still affecting people today. Wow. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen, what I... What is the deal with me talking? You got me all messed up with the, the arm, arm wrestling, wrestling match yes. earlier. Speech. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> those are our honor. Here we go again. Um, Here mentions. we go again. We got it. We got it. Honorable Charlie. mentions. There. I got it. <laughs> yes. I got it. You got it, man. Honorable mentions for the week. All right, everyone. It's time to answer a little viewer mail where you send in your questions, comments, concerns, or your insults to me at mountaintopcomicsreview at gmail.com. The question today, Richard, what do we got? Well, we had a question sent in by Robbie, and he was asking us, like, what is our most valuable comic, Ooh. sentimental mm -hmm. and monetary-wise? So okay. kind of, you know, hand in hand. And for me, I mean, if I'm going to start the question off with an answer, I'd have to go with... Um, probably the first comic I can ever remember, Web of Spider-Man 98. Okay. It was sitting in the stands of Kroger's, and I picked it up, and I just read that comic, guys, till the spine just kind of fell off of it. It's still in one piece. It just kind of is in two pieces now, but mm -hmm. it was one of my favorite ones. Sentimental's that one. Monetary. Um, last year, my dad, for Christmas, got me a signed Stan Lee of a comic, and it was Ultimate Origins number four, and it has a Hulk coming out there, punching, and he signed it right below it. It's got the seal and everything. So thanks, Dad. And for me, those are my two my two picks right there. Charlie, what do you got? Sentimental for me would have to be 
Werewolf by Night number 21. When I was in sixth grade, we used to, every once in a while, we'd bring comics to school and we would trade. Yeah. Well, there was this kid, his name was Tony. Tony. Tony used to bring like this suitcase to school that had all these comics in it. Well, he brought out Werewolf by Night number 21. I remember flipping through the pages and I was amazed like immediately. And I ended up, he saw, I, I don't have a very good poker face. <laughs> and he could see that I wanted that comic real yeah. bad. So I ended up having to trade like 10 comics for it. But you got it. Yeah, I got it. That's all that matters, man. But that comic I read over and over yes. and over and over. My favorite comic probably ever, mm -hmm. Werewolf by Night number 21. That's sentimental. Mm -hmm. Now, monetary, and this is a true story. Uh, in the summer, I like to go to garage sales, right? Yeah, I'm with you, man. Uh, it's been about 10 years ago now. I went to a garage sale here in Cookville, mm -hmm. and they had a box of comics, oh. right, at this place. Yeah. So I'm flipping through them, and the comics were 25 cents a piece. Steel. Quarter. Yeah. Quarter, right? I'm flipping through, and halfway through the box, I see Hulk 181. Oh, my, oh gosh, my gosh, man. God. That's crazy. Did the first appearance of Wolverine. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now I will say it's not in great condition. Yeah. It's in it's in poor condition, but it's Hulk 181, yeah. right? Yeah. So I literally, with trembling hands, take the quarter over to the lady and go, here you go. <laughs> and I'm running off just like <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I since then, even in the condition it's in, I've had people offer me upwards of five hundred dollars oh. for that. It's it's oh. absolutely unreal. Hulk 181, that's mine. Sawyer, what do you got? Sentimentally, Batman and Robin number 13 from, I believe it was the Grant Morrison run. Oh, okay. Yes. It's, All right. I remember the cover specifically. Batman, or not Batman, Joker's down on his knees, laying down in a crouch position. Batman is trying to stop Robin from just beating him with, with a crowbar. crowbar yes. Oh, and yeah. So, Yep, I remember, I remember, I remember reading that over and over again. It terrified me. It was terrifying. Yeah. I hated clowns, but <laughs> I read it because I loved Batman. Yes. And I really think that's what that is. One of the things that inspired my love for Batman now, gotcha. and all the studying I've done on him. But monetarily, it's definitely CGC nine point six. Batman Superman number three signed by Greg Pak and Jay Lee. Wow. That's, that's fancy stuff there. Yeah. Jay wow. Lee. CGC. Brought it. Yes. That's awesome, man. It's, I haven't read the book because, you know, it's in a slab and you right. can't read it. I'm not a, f I'm not a huge fan of slabs because sure. I want to read the book, but I can't. It's right. in there. <laughs> and so, like, I just, I really like that. It's it's good. That, I, I own I that it. one, and I've read it, and I can vouch for it. It's good. I have not given that one I've, away. I've got, like, the first five or ten from that series. I mean, I've good. read the book. I read, like, the first six issues, maybe, mm -hmm. in a hardcover I had. And it's these are good books. They're really good. And, Bruce this, and just the whole run. Bruce and Clark, right? Learning yeah. to work together, mm -hmm. come together as a team. They have to, mm -hmm. or I think it was a pop. Not Apocalypse, was it? Dark Side? Dark Side. Yeah, he was just going to take over the world. Yeah, like and normal. So it, yeah, <laughs> that's what happens every time. Well, there you go, Robbie. We appreciate the question, and we want to continue to answer your questions. We encourage you to send them our way. Your questions, comments, concerns, or your insults to me at mountaintopcomicreview at gmail.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps up another edition of the Mountaintop Comic Review. It's been a good show. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Now, before we go, we want to thank uh, everybody for tuning in. Our views are growing oh, every single yes. day. We've got people from all over that are, are uh, watching the big program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want more to jump on board, so make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on other social media platforms like what do we got Richard? We've got we're on Facebook and we're also on Twitter and YouTube so if you want to follow us on there guys we are on there live and ready to show you some great comics and tell you about it too. Also we want to remind you you can send all of your emails questions, comments, concerns or insults to me at mountaintopcomicreview at gmail.com Now before we leave We've got to give a shout out yeah. to a special someone mm -hmm. that's putting this dog and pony show together yeah. every single week. 
It's Jason from Bumbleo Digital Media. Let's hear it from Jason. Hey! You know, we really shouldn't be thanking him because he's making so much money doing this. <laughs> I mean, we're paying him upwards of three to four thousand dollars an episode, right? Jeez, yeah, it's a lot just to put it out there. Oh, wait a minute, we're not paying him anything. Not at all. No. Mm, and the logo design—that's for Jason too. Oh Everything. yeah, he did that too. Our very he's logo. He's done this whole thing, yeah. and he's done it out of the kind of sort. Jason, can you break away from the table and come over here and show yourself on camera? Come over here. Because we got to give him a round oh, of Oh, absolutely. Blood. There hey, it is. Hey, Jason! Thank you for all that you do, and thank all of you for tuning in each and every week. We promise to continue giving you the best of the comic book scene and the comic book soul. That's uh, right. Uh, what? what was I trying to say there? <laughs> it's that arm wrestling again, Charlie. That's what it was, man. I have been totally messed up all day, but anyway, it's the end of the show, so who cares? Yeah, that's true, man. Make sure you join us again next week. Till next time, so long, everybody. Take care, guys. Keep reading. Mm -hmm.